Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer with experience in the NBA, the NFL, the UFC, and the NHL. And the purpose of my YouTube channel is to give you the tools and knowledge necessary to jumpstart your own sports videography careers. And today, I want to achieve that by introducing you to an interesting camera for sports videographers, the Sony A7C Mark II. I say interesting because I do really like this camera for a specific type of sports videographers. But at the same time, it is kind of in an awkward spot on Sony's mirrorless camera lineup. I believe that as far as videography is concerned, the A7C Mark II, the A7 IV, the A6700 and the FX30 are all kind of made for the same people. The features are slightly different, the price point varies as well, but the potential buyer remains the same. Someone who's feeling held back by their entry-level camera and is now looking for a more professional option but at a reasonable price. So today I want to start by quickly explaining the differences between the four cameras I just mentioned and then show you exactly where the A7C Mark II fits in all this and who I think this camera is actually for. Let's start with a camera that I recently reviewed on this channel, the Sony A6700. This hybrid camera has a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. It can film at 4K 120 in 10-bit 422. It has 5-axis image stabilization, dual native ISO, great autofocus, the list goes on. So at a price point of $1,400 US, this is amazing value for the price. The drawbacks, however, as far as sports videographers are concerned, are the crop sensor, which really struggles at 4K 120, and the fact that a camera so powerful will for sure have some level of overheating issues if you use it at its full potential for the full length of a sporting event. But that's when the Sony FX30 enters the conversation, because that camera can do pretty much everything the A6700 can do, but this one has an internal fan, which prevents it from overheating. And because of its bigger body, it also has a full-size HDMI output and two SD card slots, which the A6700 doesn't have. All that for only $1,600 US, because yes, the price has recently dropped, so ultimately it is now only $200 more than the A6700. There are a couple drawbacks, however. The first one is the fact that even though it can take photos, it is not ideal for it at all. And the second one is the fact that because of the internal fan and the extra card slot, it does go through these batteries a little faster. All right, so far I talked about two crop sensor cameras, so now let's move on to the full frame cameras. The Sony a7 IV is the most expensive camera out of the four we're talking about today, and for a good reason. It's a full frame camera with a 33 megapixel sensor, which makes it by far the best camera for photography so far. Video-wise, obviously the full-frame sensor makes a world of difference in low-light conditions, and on top of that, this camera has pretty much everything that the Sony A6700 has, but with an extra card slot and a full-size HDMI output, allowing you to record externally in even greater quality if you want to. That camera, however, cannot record in 4K 120, and there is a 1.6 crop at 4K 60. But now here comes the Sony A7C Mark II, which is technically a better camera than the A7IV in a smaller body and for $100 less. Although a smaller body means only one SD card slot and a micro HDMI output instead of a full size. But since this camera came out after the A7IV, it is technically better because it has all the exact same specs Except that, unlike the A7IV, the A7C Mark II has the new AI processing chip, which makes its autofocus capabilities a lot better. So if you're a hybrid shooter looking for the best quality possible for both video and photo at a reasonable price, on paper, this is it. So we're now at the part of the video where I go to another basketball game to either confirm or deny this theory.
All right, so before I give you my take on the Sony a7C Mark II based on the shoot you just watched, I want to quickly talk about overheating because it is a subject that's been coming up a lot lately on my channel since I started doing more reviews of mirrorless cameras and it is quite a complicated topic. There are so many variables at play here that it is almost impossible to know for sure how a camera is going to react to your environment, but there is a lot of things you can do and a lot of settings you can adjust to put all the odds in your favor. And I'm not just talking about setting the auto power off temperature to high. There are a bunch of other things you can do. So like I said, it is complex, so much so that I'm dedicating my next video completely to this topic. We'll talk settings, we'll talk equipment, I even tested Ulenzi's new and improved external cooling fan for Sony, Canon and Nikon cameras, specifically for that video. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out. All that to say that I won't get into the heat management results of the Sony a7C Mark II today, but spoiler alert, it did do really well, but for very specific reasons. Anyway, for now, let's just talk about my experience with that camera. Like I mentioned earlier, the a7C Mark II is basically an a7IV in a more compact body. This is literally what the C in a7C stands for. So it is a great camera, obviously for hybrid shooters. It's really good at taking photos. I'm not a, a photographer myself, so I didn't want to try to show you how great it can be from that perspective because I felt like my photography skills would probably not, um, you know, make it justice, so take it for what it is. But from a video perspective, I can tell you that the full frame sensor is obviously the jewel inside that little camera. For low light conditions, it is ideal. And I know that in 4K60, which is what I use for most of that basketball game, there is a crop which can be a bit scary. You, you'd think that the quality would go down with a 1.6 crop, but it actually, Technically, it does, but not enough to be noticeable. I didn't really see anything that scared me or that disappointed me. I was fine with the 1.6 uh, crop and the quality of it and everything. I really like the image quality of this camera, seriously. Um, the only time I went back to 4K24 to get the full size of, uh, of, of my sensor was um, when I was on the baseline underneath the basket, just because I was shooting with uh, Tamron 35 to 150, and that 35 with the 1.6 crop, I just felt like my shot was a bit too tight to get the dunks and the, you know, the close-up shots. So by going back to 24, I got a wider frame, and it was just, I, I thought it looked better that way. I was happy to sacrifice the slow-mo to get a better shot. And by the way, if you're filming in 1080p, you get the wide shot at whatever frame rate, including 120 frames per second. So feel free to, feel, to, to go nuts um, in 1080p if you're happy with that. For me, it's just that my footage these days always ends up in my YouTube videos, which are all in 4K, so I try to stick to, to 4K. But like I said, amazing image quality, no complaints here, and because it came out a bit later than the a7 IV. It is technically better because it has that AI chip that the a7 IV doesn't have. So the autofocus is better, not only for humans, but also for, for cars, animals, all that stuff. So I'm thinking, especially people who, uh, who love to film racing, now it's a lot easier to manage your autofocus in that context. Otherwise, just like the other cameras in that price range, it has, you know, great uh, image stabilization. It has all the picture profiles you'd want to have, all the dynamic range that you need. Obviously, a bit more dynamic range in this camera than there would be in the APS-C camera. So again, you're you're gaining there. That's why it's obviously a little bit more expensive. But overall, I'm a big fan. So should you buy this camera? Well, basically, if like me, your focus is entirely on video and you're looking for a camera with the best features specifically for sports videography, not photography, well, I still think that in that price range, the Sony FX30 is the best bang for your buck. Just because of all the video focus features, the internal fan, and the fact that it is much cheaper. But if you're a hybrid shooter who does both video and photo, 
this is definitely the camera for you, especially if you're um, looking to upgrade from a budget-friendly camera or even from a, an a7C first generation or an a7 III, for example, this is a huge step up from any of those cameras. You're getting a full frame sensor with much better autofocus, 10 bit color, 4K 60, new picture profiles with more dynamic range, the list goes on. So yeah, go check out that camera, but also don't forget to click the link in the description to see the full list of Sony cameras, lenses, and other accessories currently on sale. Otherwise, again, my name is E, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.